sitting in the United Nations, obviously, it reminds us of the unfulfilled uh, promises which uh, were made to the people of Jammu and Kashmir for the implementation of the UN Security Council resolutions um, and the denial of justice to the people of Kashmir. So these were um, some of the issues that we had discussed and highlighted. So I'll be very happy to, um, to respond to any questions that uh, you may raise. Uh, yeah, before we before we open the uh, proceedings for question and answer, I would request that that you should keep your question brief so that more and more people can participate in this session. So, as a matter of tradition, I would request senior uh, Anka member to go ahead, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Amanat. Um, my name is Abdul Hamid uh, Sayam. On behalf of the United Nations Correspondence Association, first we welcome you, Mr. Minister. Uh, we are glad that you gave us this time, and I hope we will have a, a very good encounter with you. Uh, I have a few questions related to the uh, issues, <laughs> but they are related to the same subject, okay, about uh, Jammu and Kashmir and Palestine. Mm -hmm. Many Arab countries now are uh, abandoning the, the Palestinians. So would we ever imagine Pakistan one day would also turn its back to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And the second, uh, w would Pakistan one day normalize relations with Israel before the Palestinians have their own independent, contiguent, and uh, sovereign state? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think. Uh this is an important question, but uh, to be very honest in our interactions that we have had in the last uh, four or five days, uh, including in the OIC ministerial meeting, or for that matter during the OIC contact group on Palestine which met day before yesterday, uh, we didn't get this impression that uh, Palestine or the issue or the Palestinian people were being abandoned by any um, of the Muslim countries or OIC member countries. As a matter of fact, there was a reiteration of the support uh, that is uh, being extended uh, or which will continue to be extended uh, to the people of Kashmir for, the, uh, for their uh, right, you know, legitimate rights which have been um, uh, guaranteed to them or mentioned in the relevant uh, UN Security Council resolutions. So that is the impression that we have got during all the interactions that we have had, whether they were bilateral meetings or whether they were in the context of the overall ministerial meetings or the contact group on Kashmir. As a matter of fact, there was an expression of uh, solid support for the uh, Palestinian cause as well as the uh, people of uh, Palestine. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, again, is uh, certainly an issue of great importance. That's the core dispute between India and Pakistan. It is because of this issue that uh, we have had uh, tensions, conflicts, and uh, wars between our two countries. Um, and then um, uh, it is uh, because of this factor and the kind of steps which India had taken on 5th August 2019 uh, to further deny the Kashmiris their right, uh, including uh, uh, the attempt by being made by the Indian side to change the demographics of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, that is something that is of great concern, uh, not only uh, to Pakistan, but also people of Jammu and Kashmir. We would like to have peace with India, but uh, at the same time, it will be uh, contingent upon the resolution of Jammu and Kashmir dispute in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions. Mr. Azim and Mia. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, sorry about that. Uh, I was a secretary. Uh, yeah, one that's time, why yes. that reminds <laughs> me. Okay. Now, today, the caretaker Prime Minister has use the strong words about genocide in India, mm -hmm. you know, at the hands of the planned, uh, you know, the Hindutva groups. So, and, and not only that, along with that, Kashmir has also been mentioned and UN uh, Security Council has been reminded about the resolutions. 
don't you think that this will wage a diplomatic war of right to reply at the UN? And already India is already, you know, facing an, a global situation regarding Canadian crisis. So what do you think, you know, do, won't it inflame the Pak-India uh, confrontation? Well, you see, the point is that nobody can deny them to exercise their right to reply. You know, there is, uh, we have no doubt about it. But then the point is that whether uh, the uh, stand which is taken by India uh, in respect of this uh, dispute, the core dispute, whether it is accepted by the international community or not. Um, the UN does not accept India's claim that they have been making for a very long time about the the UN map does not show Kashmir to be an integral part of India as is claimed by the Indian side and then um, I um, uh, would say and I say this with full confidence that the Indian position is not endorsed by any country in the world you know the every country in the world they have to go by the UN Security Council resolutions and they accept this dispute as a as a dispute, internationally recognized dispute. Um, you mentioned about uh, the Canadian issue. Uh, this is a very unfortunate issue. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we have been a victim of uh, the uh, of this uh, phenomena for a very long time. I am talking about the assassinations being carried out by India in almost every South Asian country. But this is uh, perhaps for the first time that it has gone global. And this is uh, a very, very serious situation, and I think they will have to to uh, come clean on this because, as we see it, and as uh, most of the members of the international community would see it, this is like uh, the mask that they had coming off the Indian face, and uh, having been exposed by this uh, this very, very serious uh, crime that has been committed on the Canadian side. Yes, please. Uh, Lucas Chapman with Arab News. Uh, you mentioned the loss and damage fund, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the kind of first litmus test for this fund is the reconstruction efforts in Pakistan after mm -hmm. the devastating floods last mm -hmm. year. Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of how has the international cooperation for the loss and damage fund been thus far, and how is this first test going? Well, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, the Pakistan, along with other like-minded countries, uh, had developed uh, a consensus uh, in, during COP27 about loss and damages and also about the establishment of this uh, fund, climate finance fund. In addition to that, there was a, a donors conference that was held in um, Geneva beginning of this year, which was uh, 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 sponsored by the UN Secretary General. Um, my understanding is that uh, next week, perhaps on the 27th of, uh, uh, of this month, the Secretary General is going to convene a meeting in, the, uh, in, the, in this building uh, where uh, all those countries who had taken part in the uh, donors conference, they are going to, to, uh, to meet and they would certainly he would present a report about the uh, about the uh, uh, about the actualization of those commitments which were made by by various countries uh, to be very honest so far uh, there has been very little which has been trickled down uh, from the international community as far as the uh, uh, rehabilitation reconstruction work that has to be carried out Pakistan is doing that from within its own sources, resources. Um, our banks are uh, issuing loans on easy terms to all those people who were affected by the, but then obviously the banking industry has also, there are limits to what they can do. So this is the kind of a situation that we are in and I think um, uh, we are hopeful that uh, most of the promises which were made uh, by the donors, they would be fulfilled uh, shortly. Ms. Sadia Sal. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Sadia Sal. I'm from uh, Sono News. Uh, my question to you, Mr. Prime Minister, is uh, Prime Minister, yesterday, mm -hmm. he gave a very important 
statement at uh, Council on Foreign Affairs that we do not wish to join uh, any uh, camp politics. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you please elaborate us on uh, foreign policy priorities and key partnerships in the current international landscape? Thank you. But you see, obviously, the Prime Minister was referring to this, uh, uh, this uh, tension which is developing or rivalry that is to being developed. Uh, between in the uh, Asia-Pacific uh, region, the formation of new blocks which are, which are being made. Um, and obviously, it's a, it, uh, is, it presents Pakistan with a very uncomfortable situation. Uh, take, for example, the um, uh, Asia-Pacific. Asia-Pacific has been uh, a very peaceful region, prosperous region. It has... Uh, made great economic strides in the last 40, 50 years. And any tension which, uh, within the um, Asia-Pacific region, from our point of view, is certainly not good for peace and stability in that region. Uh, we would like um, uh, to basically uh, this area, region, remain as peaceful as possible so that economic opportunities which are available to Pakistan and other asia Pacific countries, they continue to uh, to grow, and uh, uh, and uh, the there are obviously there a number of uh, uh, regional connect connectivity projects which are also in the pipeline. Some are uh, operational. So it was in that context that the prime minister mentioned that we Pakistan would uh, not become a part of. We have good relations with uh, all countries of the world. This is the policy that uh, uh, that enjoys a national consensus within the country, and uh, we have solid relationship with China. We have very close relationship with the United States of uh, America and also other regional countries uh, of the region and also Asia-Pacific countries, and we would like to continue with this trajectory in our future. Paul, uh, Mr. Iftikhar Chaudhary. Oh, sorry, I tend to take Thank you. Uh, Iftikhar Ali from Associated Press of course. Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, does India's involvement in this horrible murder in Canada have an impact on its campaign to get uh, uh, to for a Security Council seat? Have any adverse effect on it? Well, you know, the uh, uh, um, Security Council reforms, as you are aware, they have been going on for a, this debate is going on for almost three decades now. And there has been no consensus. Uh, this is yet another kind of a uh, feather in India's cap, I am not really sure uh, because there are other dynamics uh, which are in play as far as the UN Security Council reforms are concerned. Um, it would certainly um, uh, materialize in case there is a consensus within the international community. And uh, obviously there is, a, there is no consensus so far. Uh, Pakistan has uh, certainly articulated its position on the um, UN Security Council reforms and uh, certainly we would like this process to be uh, entirely democratic. We would like this to uh, be more transparent and also I think there is an overall consensus you know, within this building, uh, within the members of the, uh, of the uh, UN General Assembly that uh, um, uh, there is no need to, uh, to add to another elite uh, a member or group within the Security Council. At the most, what can be done is uh, the expansion of the non-permanent uh, members of the Security Council with perhaps an extended uh, term for uh, some based on certain criteria. So that perhaps yes, remains the position. Well, certainly it has uh, raised a lot of concerns internationally um, with regard to the kind of action that they have taken in Canada. Uh, this, you know, these uh, countries, as I mentioned earlier, in South Asia, they were already uh, very, very concerned about this phenomena because all countries, South Asian countries, had, had experienced assassinations uh, originating from 
uh, India. And this is uh, uh, my in my uh, uh, recollection, this is the first uh, first time that they have gone global, uh, and that too in a country which uh, with uh, which is a very very important country, which is a member of the G20, which is uh, uh, also uh, part of the uh, alliance system, and uh, probably it would raise concerns in in almost every corner of the world. Yes. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister. My name is Arif Yaqubi from Afghanistan International TV. I would like to ask you about your uh, uh, policies towards Afghanistan. Recently, uh, you said that TTP is creating a lot of uh, bad blood between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, why, Mr. Foreign per uh, Minister, your government, particularly the army, of Pakistan doesn't take any action against TTP uh, uh, in Afghanistan or in Pakistan, and uh, how your policy would look like in the future when it comes to Afghanistan. Is it more tension that it's coming up or it's going to be more a close relationship? Thank you. Um, you know, Afghanistan is a sovereign country. Um, it's uh, uh, Pakistan follows a policy of non-interference in the internal kind of, uh, you know, while respecting the sovereignty of other, other countries. At the same time, we have expectations that uh, Afghan side would take action against all groups who are violating uh, Afghanistan's soil to carry out of, of, uh, such terrorist activities against other countries. We have a very good dialogue with India, uh, with Afghanistan, which is, uh, uh, which is held on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we have a joint commission which discusses all these issues and uh, the next meeting of uh, this uh, joint commission is also slated uh, for 21st. It, it has, yes, it was slated for 21st, which was day before yesterday. And my understanding is that it, is, it has been a very good meeting. One thing that I certainly would like to mention that uh, Afghanistan is also committed to um, uh, not allowing its uh, soil for uh, uh, terrorist activities against other countries. Uh, we recently had a trilateral meeting involving China, Pakistan and Afghanistan uh, in which uh, uh, if you look at the uh, joint statement that was issued um, after meeting between the foreign ministers of the three countries, uh, if there was a reiteration of uh, this commitment by the Afghan side that they will not allow Afghan soil to be used against other countries. Mr. Anwar Iqbal. Sir, what are the concrete results of this visit? What did we, what did we get out of it? You know, um, you don't sort of, you can't con quantify um, you know, when you have um, a visit of this nature. But the po important thing is that under one roof, one is able to interact with uh, almost everyone uh, which is present here. Uh, there have been series of meetings that um, um, Pr Prime Minister held here. There has been series of meetings that I held with my counterparts. And obviously, during these meetings, uh, we uh, put across our point of view uh, with regard to, um, uh, to uh, you know, important issues, um, uh, regional issues, global issues uh, to the international community, which is, which is extremely important. And at the same time, I think probably it is the most cost-effective way of uh, interacting with a large number of uh, uh, foreign dignitaries rather than undertaking visits to the respective countries, which uh, certainly becomes a very expensive proposition. And then uh, you also, it helps in enhancing and solidifying your bilateral relations with a large number of countries. So this is whether we, if we have a meeting with the Prime Minister, with the Chinese Vice President, or with the uh, President of Iran, or President of Uzbekistan, or for that matter, Bill Gates, obviously uh, something emerges of, out of uh, these meetings. It not only uh, uh, helps create better understanding between Pakistan and uh, the other countries about the respective issues, but also um, uh, some of the pending areas which require attention by the respective countries, that is also uh, kind of, uh, there is a reiteration of uh, that as well. Yes, sir. 
Thank you, Minister Stefano Vaccara, La Voce di New York. I have a follow-up and a question. A follow-up on the Security Council reform. Yes, I heard your answer is... I Sorry, which reforms are you? The Security Council. Security Council. Yeah, I heard your answer, but there is a difference lately that the United States, with President Biden, this is the second time they mention the reform, and it's clear the United States now favor uh, in, uh, you know, the seat for, for India. So I would like a comment on this, I mean, on Biden's speech. But my question instead is on uh, uh, Guterres' speech, the Secretary General, they talk about democracy in danger. Democracy, countries that are democratic, that now turn authoritarian. And um, my question is, do you think he was, uh, have, he had in mind also Pakistan? Because uh, Apart of the rest of the former prime minister, uh, for example, just 24 hours ago, a well-known journalist um, in, uh, in Pakistan, uh, Muhammad Khalid Jamil, has been arrested. And so uh, my question is, is Pakistan one of the country that Guterres was thinking about when he was uh, talking that democracy is in danger? Well, you know, the, I think um, uh, if you look at the situation uh, overall, there have been a, a number of coups which have been taken, which have taken place recently in some parts of the world. Um, in our neighborhood, also, uh, there are, there are a lot of question marks with regard to the uh, uh, democratic process, which is being violated with impunity. Uh, so that is, I think, probably he may, may have that uh, in mind as well when he is talking about. And uh, also, um, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, he must also have in mind the kind of denial of justice in many countries in respect of, uh, for instance, the uh, uh, countries which are on the agenda of the UN Security Council. I'm sure that he must be having those in mind as well. Uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, we are a democratic country. There is absolutely no doubt about it. We have, a, we, they, you know, in Pakistan, one parliament has completed its full term. Uh, according, it's a constitutional requirement that there is a caretaker setup, which is uh, meant to ensure uh, neutrality in the uh, next elections, uh, it, which is meant to ensure that the elections are free and fair, and which is also meant to ensure that um, that uh, people are uh, um, able to participate in the voting process without um, any violence. You know, this is this is something, and the preparations are already underway. You mentioned about uh, this uh, uh, journalist. Uh, who, you know, recently our um, we have promulgated an ordinance. Uh, which is uh, protection of uh, journalists and media personnel uh, protection bill. So I think under that bill, if there is any grievances which any member of the media has, and uh, uh, along with that bill that has been passed by the by our parliament, a joint commission has a commission has also been established within the country, which is basically meant to to address the kind of issues that you have just referred to. Um, his uh, lawyers have the, he, I don't know the details of the kind of crime or uh, 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 he may have committed, but then there is a legal course uh, uh, available to him, to his lawyers, his families, and they can always uh, seek justice from the court of law. I, I know many friends are wanting to ask questions. I'm but sorry, at about Biden? Of time. At about Biden's uh, speech on the Security Council reform? Sorry? Biden's Biden. speech. Biden's speech. You see, the point is that we are absolutely clear and all members of the, uh, of the UN system are also clear that uh, these things, inclusion of anyone within the as permanent member, that requires a consensus. It is not uh, the, um, you know, uh, will of one country or... Uh, a couple of other countries. You, there has to be a consensus. Yes, you know, this is an important issue um, that uh, we discussed the other day. As a matter of fact, there is a, there is a group uh, uh, which is uh, OIC group on Muslims in Europe. 
in which uh, we made out a very strong case uh, for uh, effective legislation to contain this phenomena. Uh, and uh, we, in that group, we also appreciated the, um, the uh, 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 introduction of a bill by the, uh, by the government of Denmark in their, uh, uh, which would criminalize um, such offen you know, offenses, uh, such actions, either you know, burning of holy books or insulting the prophets of uh, any, any religion. So I think this is a good step that they have uh, taken. Uh, another country, Sweden, is also contemplating, seriously contemplating, taking similar action. Uh, my reason is that uh, my own um, belief is that once uh, this uh, bill is passed, the Danish, many other countries will also follow suit. Well, this is going to be last question, Mr. Janzai Bali. Thank you, sir. from uh, AOA News. Sir, do you think that the world has left Pakistan alone? to deal with the situation of Afghanistan? I, I, that's not the impression that I, 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 I get. Uh, the, I, I have uh, more than two dozens of meetings with my counterparts from Europe, from Middle East, from, uh, uh, from Latin America. From, uh, that's not the impression that I get. I think Pakistan uh, is certainly taken as a very, very important country. Uh, whether it's the uh, OIC, whether it is uh, SCO, SCO has emerged as a major organization, um, or SICA for that matter. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great organization. And then the kind of role that Pakistan plays in the UN system, Pakistan, the kind of role that Pakistan plays in the OIC within the, uh, the OIC uh, as a, a active member, or other groups that we are part of, whether it's SCO, uh, I think uh, everybody acknowledges the, uh, the, uh, the important role that has been played by Pakistan. Uh, sir, uh, please, um, sir, 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 sir. From Express News, so PM sideline meetings can help to build the relationship between other countries. Second question, uh, Pakistan government did move any application against India human rights for Canada attention? <laughs> you see, the point is, it's not for Pakistan to move an application. I think the uh, uh, there is the Canadians have already. Uh, highlighted this issue. Uh, probably they are also asking for a proper investigation, and I'm sure that uh, uh, that will be held at some stage. I think uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I know you have many questions to ask, but I think we are running short of time. Okay. Two. One question, please. Okay. Two more. Two more. Yes, please. Yes, please. Along the US Congress discussion. That is two million Bengalis, and most of the contents they are fake. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, this is a serious issue. Could be uh, uh, dangerous than forfeit. So, what is the counter strategy of the Foreign Office to deal with the that kind of? Uh, matter that comes to U.S. Where Congress. is this bill? Uh, which uh, which Congress are you? Referring? U.S. Congress. In U.S. Congress, uh, uh, there is a bill pending for discussion. Uh, the contents of the bill is uh, the Pakistan military they killed seventy in seventy one war, two million Bengalis. So, <laughs> what is the what is the? I, to be very honest, I am not aware of uh, uh, any bill which is sir. pending uh, sir. 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 before yes. the American it's Congress. From Don Islamabad, uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Pakistan is facing a immense of terrorism, mm -hmm. uh, and TTP and mostly the other networks mm -hmm. uh, are involved in that, and it reportedly the uh, U.S. and the NATO forces have left. Uh, ammunition and weapons uh, in Afghanistan, which was denied by the uh, Washington, uh, so which is becoming a threat to Pakistan, and these terrorist groups are using these weapons against Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan forces uh, doesn't have their sort of weapons. So, have you raised this issue? Uh, your concerns, Pakistan's concerns regarding the terrorism uh, on this forum, or not? Thank you. Certainly, certainly, we have um, um, apprised every one. Um, you know, that we interacted with uh, about the danger 
to Pakistan's security that these terrorist groups they pose. Uh, the, you are absolutely right that uh, uh, TTP attacks from emanating from Afghanistan inside Pakistan, they have increased manifold in recent uh, years. But no, you see, the point is that uh, the, it's it's not the policy in only in respect of um, Afghan refugees. What uh, we are discussing is that all those illegal people who had come to Pakistan in the last several years, uh, they should go back to their respective countries. And these uh, illegal uh, people are not only from Afghanistan, but other countries as well. So um, uh, there is uh, a policy decision that we will ask those countries to take back these uh, people who had, you know, wherever there was a dispute um, Pakistan, they, these people, they came to Pakistan and we opened up arms for these people. But then I think now uh, that uh, situation is uh, in Afghanistan is is getting back to normal. So these people, they should go back to their respective countries. And we would expect the international community to help repatriate uh, these people to their respective countries with, in, with dignity and honor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.